and South Carolina Senator and Republican presidential candidate Tim Scott. A few moments later. But when I go back to Iowa, it will not be as a presidential uh, candidate. I am suspending my campaign. Everyone saw it coming. We just didn't really know when Senator Tim Scott would drop out of his long shot bid to win the Republican nomination for president. And apparently neither did Trey Gowdy. One of the things I would recommend to every single American, I know it's not possible, by the way, if you ever want to love your country more, run for president. Traveling this country, meeting people has been one of the most fantastic experiences of my entire life. I love America more today than I did on May 22nd. But when I go back to Iowa, it will not be as a presidential uh, candidate. I am suspending my campaign. I, I think the voters uh, who are the most remarkable people on the planet have been really clear that they're telling me uh, not now, Tim. I don't think they're saying, Trey, no, but I do think they're saying not now. And so I'm going to respect the voters and I'm going to hold on and keep working really hard and uh, look forward to another opportunity. You are, you are suspending right. your presidential campaign. I'm trying, I, I'm trying to process this, th this information and, and I'm trying to do it uh, on, on live television, so forgive me. Trey's taking this news a bit harder than most people. And after Tim Scott's last debate just a few days ago, the line of questioning even directly asks if this is the end. The threshold for the next debate is a little tougher, right? You have to be 6% yes. national polls or in one of the first four states. You have to have 80,000 unique donors. We know it was a challenge for you to, to, to make it to the debate stage here. Do you think tonight is your last debate or can you t promise your donors and your voters you're gonna be there oh, in a month? I'm 100% confident that 30 days from now in Alabama, we'll be hanging out having a conversation about, wow, Tim, you, you were actually on the stage. Of course I'll be on the stage. What we saw in the last, in, the, in less than a, about a week, we saw thousands of people come and donate to our campaign, and our numbers already are helping us to qualify in Iowa for the next debate. Yes, I know that Tim Scott can't tell NBC News immediately after that last debate that he won't make it to the next one despite his positive Christian message wrapped in discrimination and exclusion. It was a PR-driven characterization of his campaign. It's still being delivered even after he dropped out. Poll after poll, he would always come out with these super high favorables. Voters everywhere loved him, yeah. but not enough to vote for him. Mm -hmm. What do you make of that? I mean, I think they were able to get to know him. They liked him. You know, if you and I saw him in, in small town halls, this is a guy from Charleston, South, North Charleston, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. He'd go to rural Iowa and connect with people. Mm -hmm. I also think that the, candidly, the, the electorate wasn't necessarily too enthused for an optimistic, positive message at this time. Doesn't mean it's forever, as you kind of heard him on Fox, mm -hmm. but at least right now, doesn't seem to be the case. Although Tim Scott's communication advisor is still holding on to that narrative that he ran a positive campaign where he kissed babies and made everyone that he met tear up, they missed that his stances on education, health care, abortion, taxes were just as detrimental as the rest of the field's positions on those are. Uh, he must have been leaning into the fact that people who know him like him as a person. I think that's true. And apparently, publications from all over fell into that same group because they pushed the same optimistic, happy warrior candidate from the beginning all the way to his exit. Here's some of that optimism that just over 2% of people polled really enjoyed. Uh, I, I am indeed uh, suspending the campaign, but I, I am going to remain as committed to making sure that this country uh, chooses the right person by enjoying the journey of uh, just helping people everywhere throughout South Carolina and through our country. Uh, we have an amazing country. I'm very thankful to be in America. We should all be proud of this country. Uh, I was a kid, Trey, as you know, uh, nearly failed out of high school as a freshman. And here I am uh, running for president just a few minutes ago. I cannot stand by while this is done to America. She's done too much for me. Our nation, our values, and our people are strong but our president is weak. Yes. America is not a nation. And this is how the upbeat, optimistic, and smiley warrior ended his last debate as a presidential candidate. There is a crisis that is growing in our nation, and that crisis is cultural and spiritual. We need a renewal, a great awakening. We should reject the left's valueless, 
faithless, fatherless society. We should turn back to faith, patriotism, and individual responsibility. We should stop choosing victimhood and start choosing victory. We should stop kneeling in protest and start kneeling in prayer. There are basic truths that built this country. If you're able-bodied in America, you work. If you take out a loan, you pay it back. If you commit a violent crime, you go to jail. And if God made you a man, you play sports against men. I do not just want to... I do not just want to win the battle against Joe Biden. I want us together to win the war, the war for our Christian conservative Senator values. Scott.